Welcome back to Mind Pump TV. I'm your host, Adam Schaefer, and this is going to conclude the five-part series that we've done with John Wolf from Onnit Academy. Now, this part of the five-part series is one of my favorite parts because this was a game changer for me. So he's gonna actually show how an actual club can be superior to even a dumbbell. And why this is a favorite video for me out of the five part series is this was a game changer for me. I used to struggle and battle with like what they call golfer's elbow. Even though I'm a terrible golfer, I don't golf very often. You get this sharp pain right here in your elbow. And a lot of that comes from losing this rotational strength in the wrist. It's just because I trained like a bodybuilder for the last four or five years. And sure, I built a bunch of strong muscles on my body, but then I wasn't very fluid. I wasn't very dynamic. I didn't have a lot of rotational strength or anti-rotational strength, which this is what this video is all about. So if you're somebody that suffers from some sort of joint pain, you can see some of the benefits of using clubs and how to do that in this video. So if this video helps you out. Make sure you guys like the video, share it with your friends that may be dealing with maybe golfer's elbow. Also, subscribe to the channel. Every week we're dropping more knowledge for you guys. Now, John, I have here a dumbbell and a steel club. And I love steel clubs and I love clubs and mace bells and these unconventional tools. I feel like they're not very popular. Not a lot of people know about them. Your dumbbell is actually something you're going to see in, in a gym, a commercial setting uh, pretty visibly. And it does play an important part in gaining strength. And, you know, we usually see this in the bodybuilding community. We see this, you know, in hypertrophy training. Mm -hmm. I tend to use it for functional purposes as well. So there's lots of applications there, but there's lots of differences between the two of these. What do you use specifically dumbbells and the, the, uh, the club? So, you know, it's funny with the lighter clubs, especially since, uh, so, since our clubs are relatively short at the light weight, Sometimes I actually like to challenge people to better understand that tool by doing something that's a little more familiar with, mm. with, with a dumbbell. Okay. So, so I just let's use a couple of different examples here, like a curl and a press, okay. right? right. So, so we'll use you as, as, as the, uh, the tester and you, you tell me what the experience is like. Okay. So, so if we get in a nice strong position and we curl a dumbbell, the variability is very minimal. Right, your hand placement is going to be predictable. The weight's going to be evenly distributed. Right, right. right. And that's Unless awesome. you're, yeah, you're supinated or, yeah, you're pronated. I mean, there's a couple different variants. Yeah, if we could do Arnold presses, <laughs> yeah. or, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, the weight's evenly distributed. The, only the momentum of that rotation is causing that rotary, rotary challenge. Right. Right. So if say we're doing a, a Arnold press, we we have that nice rotation through the extension. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. But at the same time, it's only so much. You have some rotational mass going, but you're still evenly distributed. So it's not going to get away from you unless you're it's going It's very crazy. balanced. It's very balanced, right? So you have that counterbalance. Let's just go ahead and, and play with the, the club. And what, we, what I want you to do is I want you to find a position that's actually more center mass. So actually, let's go ahead and go with uh, the club holding near the top of the handle, like middle finger on the top of the handle. Okay. This is still relatively balanced. So you see, I can hold it with one, one finger. So maybe I get the top finger and now it's not balanced, right? Okay. So let's just try that. Um, and we can try it in two different orientations. One loaded towards the pinky. Mm -hmm. So now, you, now what we have is even just holding this position, you have rotary input. All right, it's already trying to turn my wrist down. Exactly. I'm it, having to... And these bones and these tissues actually have a huge rotary, rotary potential, mm -hmm. but we don't train them that way. No, we so, don't. So now let's go ahead and go through a full range curl and just see how that feels. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that is quite a difference. It's quite a difference, right? So now we understand that the rotational input is the club wants to spin in a counterclockwise to the, to the camera orientation. Right, because if I relaxed at all, it's going to look like this. Exactly. So this is, again, that anti-rotational strength anti -rotation. element. Let's go ahead and tra tra flip that opposite way. Okay. And now, again, now this wants to go clockwise, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So now you, even, you have rotary stabilizers that are firing off in the forearm just to keep this balanced. And then we're trying to keep our structure nice and engaged. And this is the perception of load, but this is 10 pounds, that's 20 pounds. What actually is giving you more challenge here? Right, this is much more challenging. Right, okay, great. And so we can look at adding rotation through that as well, just like you talked about the Arnold type of inspiration. So let's right. go, let's go uh, knuckles down to start and then rotate up as we go. So now 
Now that comes in a much more arced fashion. The longer lever creates this sensation that it's going in this arc, is a roundabout kind of way. And I'll try to do that and not let the forearm go towards your midline. So, oh, right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's a cheat. Yeah. And take note of Ooh. how much challenge there is there. So we can, we can manage a lot of variables here that you wouldn't be managing with the dumbbell. It doesn't make it uh, inherently better or worse, but with the creative mindset, you can start loading tissues that would otherwise go untrained. Right. And so when you're talking about uh, this type of strength, it carries over really well to like martial art training, wrestling, grappling, mm -hmm. you're, anything where rotational control is your primary function of actually controlling a dynamic resistance like another body. You right. know? I would argue most things in, in our life uh, that's functional, like, it, I mean, your body's supposed to do certain things, your joints are su supposed to do certain things, and they're supposed to rotate, so uh, to be able to emulate that a little bit more uh, closely, I feel like, is a win. Yeah, and we can apply that with these lighter clubs, the fives and the tens. We really wouldn't want to do, like, emulate dumbbell-like movements with heavier ones because the levers get longer mm. and thereby the stress load right. would be too much. So, so an ideal situation for me would be like, hey, let's do some traditional uh, evenly distributed work with the dumbbells, build some strength, mm -hmm. and go for hypertrophy, right? right? And then use some of these lighter clubs to engage those rotary stabilizers. Mm. And then you have a well-rounded strength approach. Absolutely. So, that, so you, don't, you get the benefits of both tools rather than have to choose one or the and other. And I imagine too, that way we can prevent certain pains and impingements uh, going forward, which I think that, you know, in the bodybuilding community are people that are prone to more just specifically balanced, loaded type of training, you know, eventually you're going to run into that wall. You're going to run into that that place where now it's, uh, it's compromising the joints on some level. Yeah, I mean, like, okay, so your muscles work in series with your connective tissues, right? And the reality is, is when we're looking at muscular hypertrophy, we're only really challenging that aspect to the degree that we are. So unfortunately, when things become out of balance, you know, these other connective tissues, they need to load and unload in different ways. And then you have the rotary stabilization that we were just talking about. All those things need to be kind of working harmoniously for your joints to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. And the reality is this, like if you were just doing that version of the curl, you'd quickly supersede your ability to adapt positively to that rotary input. Because right. especially most of us have never done that type of rotational training. You probably end so up it's with new, some... it's novel, it's a stimulus that your body hasn't felt before. Eventually though, your body's gonna you know, adapt to that process. And so that's where we come back to uh, you know, a balanced load. Yeah, so cycling these things, right? right? And right. the dosage, to be honest, you know, I would keep the dosage really low with that type of mm. that type of drill, you know, and yeah. fold it into a more comprehensive program. Well, I would really like to get bodybuilders to do stuff like this, man. This would be amazing to, if we could see this in the gym and, uh, you know, get a little more rotational type movements that uh, just don't exist. Man, I, I think uh, that'd be a win. It's only a matter of time, man. Yeah. <laughs>